right, I'm gonna continue. So, I guess you get the idea. Of, I think I went overboard with the details on uh, James Trichester. And I'll go to the next one, where uh, I've got an Emus Dodge, son of John Dodge and Martha Fisk. Now, uh, the Dodge genealogy asserts that Amos Dodge was the son of John Dodge, and the proof that they provided uh, was that he was, he is said by them, as far as I know, but I don't know if the source records uh, say this, that he was hired by his uncle Andrew Dodge, and later got into a some kind of land transaction with his brother Phineas, which all fit into the family tree perfectly. Um, you know, I don't know if they just assumed that this Amos Dodge that appears in, in Wenham County, Connecticut in uh, the 1600s, the late 1600s, early 1700s, is the same Amos Dodge that is the son of John Dodge and Martha Fisk. I haven't seen any record of a will for for uh, John Dodge or or Martha Fisk, um, and because I can't tell how they've come up with the conclusion that they have, they didn't do what Drake did and have source records in an appendix and put a footnote and refer you to look back at that that appendix as to how they draw their conclusion. I don't know if they just simply assumed that. That Amos Dodge was, you know, John Dodge's son and the nephew of, of Andrew Dodge and the and the, you know, brother of Phineas, uh, and that was their way of, you know, drawing the conclusion because they were the only Dodges there, so they decided to invent the fact that he was a brother or son. I don't know if that's true or not. I haven't been able to see the original record myself, so I can't come to any conclusion about it. Um, it appears I have reasonable assurance, but. Since I haven't been able to see that doc, that source document myself, and I don't, and I can't, in my own mind, uh, say without a doubt that that wasn't invented. That I, I can't say that it was that he was the son of John Dodge and Martha Fisk. Then there's the case of Benedict Burgess uh, being the son of John Burgess and Hannah James. Um, I did a DNA test for. Um, my own cousin George Burgess, and uh, his DNA patterns match exactly with uh, 15 other male Burgesses that either have a proven or a claimed descendancy from Thomas the Pilgrim uh, and, and his wife Prudence. Benedict does indeed show up on the census uh, in the same town, uh, Wyndham. Sterling Wyndham County, Connecticut, with his brother, with uh, with John Burgess, as the head of another household. We don't have any details for who's in the family. This one is so solid because of the DNA evidence. Um, even though you know I have his will in um, Hoosick Rensselaer County, New York, even naming his wife Zilpha, and that's that's another problem. I don't know that he actually married Zilpha Madison. I know he married a woman named Zilpha, but whether it was Zilpha Madison, I, I, you know, I can't say that for sure. It's been asserted as such, but there's no documentation or proof, arm's length proof from someone that doesn't care about the outcome or doesn't want to fit that Amos Dodge into the, the book they're writing. Um, <laughs> right? <laughs> That's what could happen with Amos Dodge. The, he sees the name as Dodge, and oh, he must be related. Let's just put him over here, right? Um, the same thing with, with, with Zilpha. I know he had a wife named Zilpha, but I, I don't know that it was Zilpha Madison. You know, I've been told that. There's no nothing to back that up, so how can I say? Now, what's my limited assurance? Well, one thing that happened is some of... Uh, we were trying to trace what happened to Hezekiah Madison, which is uh, Zil the supposed Zilpha Madison's grandfather, and, she, and his, some of Hezekiah's um, court records are, are showing up in Wyndham, Salem County, uh, Connecticut, the same place that John Burgess and Hannah James lived and where Benedict Burgess came from before he moved to Hoosick, New York. So that that's that's 
pretty good indication of limited assurance. And Madison's also moved up into the Vermont area, but when where we can where I could find you know, birth, marriage, and death records and tombstone inscriptions for for Madison's to to make connections for other siblings. I just can't find that marriage record for, for, for Zilpha. I could find her, her tombstone. Um, I don't even think I can find a birth record. I can't find a will for George Madison. So there's there's a big gap there that I'm trying to fill out. So I only have limited assurance. It makes sense analytically. The story, everything that about it makes sense, except for having that, that, that vital record that, that makes it conclusive, which is the opposite of just having a vital record but not having a story or or knowing what was happening at the time around it. Um, I have another answer named Charles Leet that uh, I've worked an awful, very hard to try to figure out. Fortunately, um, the book uh, called the, you know, the two books that were written about William Leet's descendants, between the two of them, there's a pretty complete record of all the Leets that were living in the country but for one family that went to Pennsylvania and one um, uh, early um, al resident alien named Isaac Lee that may have moved on to Pennsylvania as far as I could tell. The people that are doing that family seem to think so. Um, and all those children are accounted for. It's I'm fairly certain that my Charles Lee was a descendant of, of William Lee just by the, by the fact of my examining all the census records from the, the first ones taken in 1790 up through 1840, accounting for every member of every household, you know, you know, and, and, and see, looking at their migration patterns and things like that, you know, there's only, there's only one place underneath the tree that Charles could have could have, or a couple places under the tree that Charles Lee could have fallen under, especially living in Saybrook, or being born in Saybrook. As one of his recent obituaries I found said that he was born in. There were two possibilities as to who his father could have been. And one was, um, both were named Alan Lee. And there was one Alan Lee that died and drowned in the Connecticut River. That, that actually, there was an Alan Lee that died drowned in the Connecticut River that could have been the father of Alan Lee. And um, but upon examining his will, there's no mention of a son named Alan. There's a birth record for a son named Edward Alan Lee, which is what got. A, I was wondering if those were just there was those were twins. He's the only guy with a with a middle name. But no, it was, it was genuine. <laughs> it was his name, Edward Allen Lee. It wasn't, they weren't twins. But we looked into that. But anyway, through all, all, uh, all the, the hours I spent on all this, I basically had narrowed it down as there could only be one or two different families that could have been his father between, all, between the enumerations in the census records and the two books, The Family of William Lee, every single leak in the country was accounted for. And so, um, but I couldn't get anywhere. The, the only assurance I have, the only limited assurance I have right now is the fact that Alan Lee, who was also born in Saybrook, married a woman named Abigail Kelly in Connecticut at Kenilworth, he ended up dying in Benson Rutland County, Vermont, in his pension application for being a Revolutionary War soldier, he said that he had five children and a wife living in Delaware County at the time that he was estranged with. Now, of course, Charles Lee lived in Delaware County at that time, and I believe he had a brother named he had it. There was also another man named two other men, one named Martin Lee, one named Warren Lee, both of which attended the same churches that Charles did. And one of them is buried there in Delaware County, New York, next to a woman named Henrietta Lee, 
the mother of Warren. <laughs> so that's the limited assurance I have that as far as the church records in that part of Saybrook or Connecticut, those churches burned down. They, they were destroyed, I think, in the Revolutionary War. Well, no, he was born kind of late for that. But I, I've been told that they, those churches had, had burned down. Luckily, Alan had, had married in Kenilworth and not at the church where all of his children were baptized. Otherwise, I wouldn't have that other clue. All I'd have is you know, a guy making a pension application living in Benson, Rutland County, Vermont, seeing he had five children in Delaware County, which might be, you know, it's about as good as it's going to get. So that's another problem one. Now getting back to Benija Burgess, I could say that I have sufficient competent evidence that my cousin George and myself descend from Thomas Burgess the Pilgrim. But I can't say that necessarily, although it's eye-rollingly, almost eye-rollingly obvious, I still don't have that, you know, that one record, that will, you know, do, do I have John Burgess's will saying his, naming his son Benija, you know, you don't have to figure it out, it's actually, you know, um, that knowing and not just figuring it out is what constitutes sufficient competent evidence, um, in my opinion, um, you know, so it's an unusual situation, I, you know, the, the person I believe to be his father, I can't prove he's the son of, but I can prove you know his great, his supposed father's great great grandfather that that he does descend from. Okay, and I'm going to stop here. Then I'm going to do the story about the Skiles.